Let's check out the fill tool now. It is going to let us fill in large areas of our canvas really quickly. Let's start though first with a G pen and turn the anti-aliasing all the way up. And then let's draw a shape that is about this wide and just connect it at the end so that it's an enclosed figure of some sort. Okay, so now we're going to go to our fill tool, which is going to look like some variation of the paint, paint bucket. And we have four options, and it may be set on one of the other ones, but let's leave it on the first one at first. This is going to look at only at this layer that we just put our black circle on. And when I take a color, or I could use black or white, and I click in here, it's going to fill this. And the way that it fills it is by looking at the p pixels next to what I just clicked on and asking if it's the same color or a different color. And it has a margin of how it does that. It's called our color margin. Basically, the higher this color margin, the more colors that it will accept into uh, what it is going to color over. So in this case, it I clicked on the white and it went all the way across the white until it got to the black and it said that's that color is too different based on this color margin and it's going to stop there and uh this uh close gap option we'll talk about in a minute it's not too big a deal but this follow adjacent pixel we need that checked if we want it to behave like this i'm going to undo this now and show you what will happen if i have this unchecked basically if it's not following the adjacent pixel it's going to look at every color that is similar or dissimilar to the, the color I click on and say, is this something that I'm going to color over? So if I click in here now, it actually colors inside and outside the uh, circle and ignore this line. Basically, it just said all this white is too, um, is too similar to what he just clicked on and we need to color it. So that is what happens when we have that unchecked. Now I am, uh, referring only to the editing layer, but usually when I color, I'm going to undo this. Actually, I'm going to keep this, the shape. Usually when I color though, I, if I am working with inks and, and I want to add color, I'll put the colors behind the ink layer. So for example, I would add a layer between the paper and layer one, and that would be my color layer. And for the sake of this, I'll, I'll label it color just so you know what it is. But now when I color, if I leave it on this option of refer only to editing layer, it's going to basically ignore this, this black and I'm not going to be able to color um, within that shape and because it's only looking at the layer where we put the colors in right now. That layer is totally empty. There's nothing on it. So if I were to click in here, Even though follow adjacent pixel is on, it would still go right through that and go around it. So I don't want that to happen. I want it just to color in here. So I am going to click here, which is going to refer to all the other layers and colors that I have included in my sketch or my drawing. And now when I click in here, it does color everything. The only problem is, well, actually there's no problem right now, but uh, I'm going to undo that and turn this area scaling off. I forgot I left it on because I always use it so much. And I'm also going to turn close gap on. But if I don't have that area scaling on, if I had tried to color in here, it looks fine from a distance. But when you get close enough, like really close, you can see there's actually this kind of gap line along the edge. It, it's not as noticeable with this red, but with some colors, Think, for example, if I had done a fill of black, you can see the line a lot more noticeably. And we don't want that if, if that is in our, not our intention. And that is not what I want right now. I wanted a nice clean color. So undoing this, what I had initially uh, checked, my area scaling is what allows me to kind of go beyond what it initially perceives as the edge and go beyond into that. So it's actually coloring into the black but it's not going to be visible because this layer is below the black. So if that makes sense, I think it will once I show you what it looks like colored. So if I press it now, it goes across into here so that when, if I turn the line off, 
it's actually crossing over into that area. Maybe you can see a little better up here. Maybe not too noticeably, but I think you'll notice if I drag the color above. So there you can see that definitely. And when it's behind, so in this case, I wanted it behind and that is just uh, how that works with area scaling. So there are other tweaks you can make. The only uh, significant thing though that I really want to show you is the closed gap. And that basically lets you, um, if I have an ink layer, well, I do have an ink layer. If I have, make it black, if I have a shape and it doesn't quite close, and this will happen a lot when you're drawing. And I want to color in here and I'm on the color layer. If I use my fill tool now and I don't have closed gap checked, it's just going to bleed right out through that hole into all the other areas. Well, it was on black, but I think you, you'll get the point either way. It, it, it doesn't stay contained in here as I thought it would happen. So what I need to do is use that closed gap feature and set it to however much I think based on, see, and it closes it right up. So that's one way you can do that. But also if you're using refer other layers, you could also create, if you don't want to close that in your final sketch, I could just create another layer here, for example, and call this my, uh, my close layers. And I'm just going to, on this layer, use a black line, but I'm going to use a very thin one. And just seal this up where I want it to end. Let's say I want it to end like right here. Yeah. If I wanted it to go all the way out there, then I could go back to my color layer and on my fill tool, not even use the closed gap and just press it right thread and it goes all the way to this. And then if I have that, like a bunch of spots in the picture with that, that I'm using that when I'm done coloring, I can just remove this and let's say I colored out here. Because this area of scaling is on, it should go far enough into it that there won't be a gap. But let's make sure if I turn the closed layer off now. Oh, actually, it didn't, didn't go far enough. So to avoid that, I should probably turn the area of scaling all the way up or at least to a higher number until I can get those to meet because I don't really want that white. Or I could also just, um, when I am finished, you know, paste, or not paste, but, you know, use my fault, my fill tool, but turn that off and make it whatever color I want it to be. <laughs> that was because the area scaling was on. So there's different ways you can toy around with it, but I did want you to understand the closed gap concept. Let's zoom out and I'm going to get rid of some of this color. Okay, so I'm back to my original thing with just the, the shape. And I want to show you the next tool, which is close and fill. This is uh, similar to the paint bucket, but it's going to give you actually like a lasso. And basically if I have like a, an area that's uncolored inside a shape, I can just go around on the shape and close it. And then it'll fill with whatever I have selected. I keep putting it down to black, which is not really helpful to me. Show it again. But I believe you have to close, I mean, you have to get every inch of the edge. If you, for example, if I didn't quite get the edge like that, I don't think it'll color. Yeah, so you have to be pretty precise. So this definitely has a very specific use, but you can also change the color margin and other options that might give you a, a purpose for it. The final one is the paint unfilled area. And this is actually this has a lot of different options, but I find the most helpful option is target all colors, mainly because I work on different layers. So what this is going to do is when I, uh, oh, that wasn't the brush shape. I mean, brush size, that was the margin that explains that. So if I turn the brush shape to a larger shape, basically this is, does something similar to close and close and fill, but this is kind of more when you have, actually, I'm going to put some more ink down first and show you what this would be useful for. So if I have like all these, let me just create a lot of gaps in here. 
Okay, so I have all these these areas. If I wanted to get all of them without having to tap on all of them individually, I could go and use the uh, paint unfilled area tool and just basically, as long as I cover the entire white area in the the enclosure, it'll close it and fill it with. Uh, I have it selected to black again, unfortunately, so it's going to just become all black, but I'll show you again in a second. So again, this is because the area scaling is not checked, so that's why we're getting that white line of death. Let me turn this off, and I'm going to turn the area scaling up to 10. That should be fine, and change this color. So let me show you a few at a time. If I wanted these, I'll just go like this, and they fill. If I don't cover it all the way, though, it's not going to fill. So these two, nothing happened. This one I got all the way, so that one filled, but that one didn't. So it's kind of a finicky tool. you got to be careful and know how to use it, but otherwise I think it's it's kind of helpful if you're doing a lot of complex patterns and you don't want to find every little spot that you need to fill. If you just want to get everything in mass, it's just really fast. And there you go. So that is the uh, paint unfilled area. So these are each different options you have for filling in your pictures.